Chemical reactions happen at many different speeds. They can be fast, like when you turn on your gas burner and ignite it, it immediately catches fire. Or it can be slow, like the slow rusting of an old abandoned car. But how exactly do we measure the speed or the rate of a chemical reaction? How do I put a value to how fast this reaction is happening or how slow this one is happening? So in this video, we are going to see how we record and measure the rate or the speed of a chemical reaction. So how do we measure the speed or the rate of a chemical reaction? Well, in any chemical reaction, there are these reactants that are converted into the products. So out here we have some reactants and during the course of the reaction, it gets converted into the products. Now this conversion can be fast or it can be slow. So the speed or the rate of a chemical reaction should be thought of as how fast the reactants get converted into the products in the course of a chemical reaction. So how do we measure how fast the reactants convert into the products? Well, we can do that by checking for the change in the amount of reactants that is happening per unit time in the course of this reaction. A greater change in the amount of reactants means that the conversion is happening faster and so greater will be the speed of the reaction. Now instead of checking for the change in the amount of reactants, we could have instead checked for the change in the amount of products per unit time. And similarly, we could have said that a greater change in the amount of products per unit time means a faster conversion of the reactants into the products and so a greater speed of the reaction. So the speed of a chemical reaction can be thought of in terms of the change of the reactants per unit time. And this is commonly referred to as the rate of disappearance of the reactants of the reactants or in terms of the change in the amount of products per unit time, which is referred to as the rate of appearance of the products. Let us now take a few examples to help us understand better. Let us say we have a hypothetical reaction in which some gas A converts into the gas B. Now let's assume that initially at time t equal to zero, I had 10 moles of A. So there are 10 moles of A out here initially. And let's assume that after 10 minutes, all of this A gets converted into B. So in this reaction, one mole of A gives one mole of B. So 10 moles of A on complete reaction in 10 minutes gives me 10 moles of B. So how do we calculate the rate of this reaction? The rate of this reaction. So the rate of a reaction can be thought of in terms of the rate of disappearance of the reactants or in terms of the rate of appearance of the products. So let us try and calculate the rate of disappearance of A out here. Now the rate in disappearance of A is the change in the amount of A per unit time. And change in the amount of A out here can be measured in terms of the change in moles. So the rate of disappearance of A can be thought of as the change in the moles of A by change in time, right? So now if I ask you what the rate of disappearance is, you can say that 10 moles of air disappears in 10 minutes. So the rate of disappearance of air is 10 moles in 10 minutes. So it's going to be one mole per minute. Let me bring this out here. So the rate of disappearance of air, you would say is one mole per minute. However, if we use this formula, then change always represents final minus of initial. So change in moles will be n final minus of n initial, while change in time will be t final minus of t initial. So if I now plug in the values, the final moles of A is 0, while initially I had 10 moles of A. The final time is 10 minutes and the initial time is assumed to be 0. So the rate of disappearance of A will come out to be minus of 10 by 10. So it will come out to be minus of one mole per minute, right? 
So should we call the rate of disappearance of air as 1 mole per minute or should we call it as minus of 1 mole per minute? What do you think it should be? Well, the rate of disappearance of air will be 1 mole per minute and not minus of 1 mole per minute because 1 mole is disappearing per minute not minus of 1 mole. So to correct this, what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a negative sign in front of this formula. So it's going to be minus of this, which will be minus of this, which will ultimately come out to be 1 mole per minute. So the rate of disappearance of air should be written as minus of change in moles by the change in time. Similarly, the rate of appearance of B can also be thought of as change in moles of B by the change in time. So should we put a minus sign out here? Before we think about that, just by looking at this data, let us try and think about the rate of appearance of B. Well, 10 moles of B appears in 10 minutes. So the rate of appearance of B is again 10 mole in 10 minute. So it's 1 mole per minute, right? Now, if you use this formula, change is final minus of initial. So it's n final by minus of n initial by t final minus of t initial. So finally, I have 10 moles of air and initially I had 0 divided by 10 minus of 0. So this will come out to be plus of 1 mole per minute, right? So the rate of appearance of B using this formula comes out to be plus of 1 mole per minute as expected. So we don't need to put a minus sign out here and just to drive home my point, let me write it as plus of change in moles by change in time. Now instead of calculating the change of A and B in terms of moles, we could have done it say in terms of concentration or in terms of pressure. For example, out here we had 10 moles of A in a 2 litre container. So instead of saying that we have 10 moles, we could have said that we have 10 moles in 2 liters, that is 5 molar of A. Molarity is number of moles per unit volume. So we had 10 moles in 2 liter. So in 1 liter we had 5 moles, so it's 5 molar of A. Now after 10 minutes, we again had 10 moles of B. So instead of saying 10 moles, we could have said 10 moles in 2 liters. So we could have said that we had 5 molar of B. So now instead of calculating the rate of disappearance in terms of moles per unit time, we could have also calculated it in terms of the change in concentration of A per unit time. Right. So out here 5 molar of A disappears in 10 minutes. So per unit time the rate of disappearance will be 0.5 molar per minute. Similarly, the rate of appearance of B can also be measured in terms of the change in concentration of B per unit time which will also come out to be 0.5 molar per minute out here. Similarly, we can also calculate the rate in terms of the change in pressures, especially if the reactants are gases. So out here initially we had 10 moles of air. So we had 10 moles in a 2 liter container at a temperature of 100 Kelvin. So using the ideal gas equation, we can calculate the pressure which will come out to be 41 atm. So initially I had 41 atm of A. Now after 10 minutes, all of the A converted into B and we had 10 moles of B. So again if we use the ideal gas equation, we'll find that the pressure of B comes out to be equal to 41 atm. So the rate of disappearance of A and the rate of appearance of B in terms of pressure will be 41 atm by 10 minutes so it will be 4.1 atm per minute so even this will come out to be 4.1 atm per minute now we generally express rates in terms of concentration or pressure and not in terms of moles because it turns out as we'll see in a later video that rates of reactions depends upon the molecular density that is the number of molecules per unit volume rather than on the absolute number of moles. Both concentration as well as pressure gives us an idea about the molecular density. 
so rates is generally expressed in terms of concentration or in terms of pressure so out here the rate of the reaction can be thought of to be equal to the rate of the disappearance of a which will also be equal to the rate of appearance of b which will be equal to 0.5 molar per minute or 4.1 atm per minute or 1 mole per minute let us take one more example let us say that out here initially i had 10 molar of a and let's assume that after 5 minutes the concentration of a becomes zero while that of b and c increases to 20 molar and 10 molar respectively so what will be the rate of disappearance of a the rate of appearance of b and the rate of appearance of c in this case you can pause the video and think about the answer so 10 molar of a disappears in 5 minutes so the rate of disappearance of a will be 10 by 5 which will be 2 molar per minute right similarly 20 molar of b appears in 5 minutes so the rate of appearance of b will be 20 divided by 5 which will be 4 molar per minute also 10 molar of c appears in 5 minute so the rate of appearance will be c of c will be 10 by 5 which will be equal to 2 molar per minute now what will be the rate of reaction in this scenario do we say that it's 2 molar per minute or is it 4 molar per minute or is it something else so how do we report the rate of reaction in such a scenario when the rate of reactants and the rate of the products are not equal we will explore this question in detail in the next video